In Acts chapter 13, <clears throat> if you were to read from verse 6, which we're not going to, but um, there was a sorcerer that um, withstood Paul and Silas. But in, in, verse, in verse 9, then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou evil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And again, you read it from verse 6, and you actually see somebody actually withstood Paul and Silas, and Paul actually discerned what they were doing. And he spoke against them, and the very blindness that was on uh, somebody else actually come on this person. Let's stay in um, in Acts chapter sixteen. We'll go to Acts chapter sixteen and verse sixteen. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. In other words, she was a fortune teller. That's the type of spirit that she had. So when people read tarot cards, and they read your fortune and everything else, it's demonic. You shouldn't be reading it, your, 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 uh, your stars in the paper, that's totally wrong. That goes against the word of God. You shouldn't be going to a fortune teller. And then, let me just say this, brothers and sisters, there is no such thing as a person <clears throat> who has gone to the other side and can speak to you. There is no such thing. I've heard people say, well, you know, I get in touch with Auntie Megan and she's on the other side and she speaks to me. She does not. That is a demonic spirit. How do I know? Because the word of God tells me again that when Elijah was raised up by King Saul, who actually spoke, the witch actually called the spirit up, he was condemned. Saul lost his kingdom. It's serious what I'm talking about this morning. Halloween is just a few days and people say there is no harm in it whatsoever. My child, if my child, if I had young children today, I would not allow them to go trick or treating. My grandchildren wanted to go and I had the opportunity, I would not allow them to go. Fortunately, they will not go but I know many of people will go trick and treating. It's demonic. Now maybe you didn't expect me to speak on these lines this morning, but the church needs to hear, Christians need to hear the message that the, 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 the Word of God is teaching. Not, please don't come to church and ask me to bless you. Please come to church and ask me to disciple you. Because if I can disciple you, you will not make the mistakes that other people are making. Amen? You still with me? And so we begin to see in Acts chapter 16 that when Paul and Silas began to share the word of God, they were thrown into prison because they spoke about the evil spirit. And it wasn't for the fact that the masters of this young lady was interested in this woman, they were interested in the fact that they could no longer make a profit from this lady's lifestyle. <clears throat> but you see, man thought it was going to be to his benefit 
but you read later on that there was a massive great earthquake and both Paul and Silas and everybody else were completely delivered and the whole household come to know Christ as their personal saviour. Like I said many times, man means it for evil, but God turns it for his good. Um, just a couple of other scriptures and then I'm going to wrap it all up and we'll continue next time we speak. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. And this is so important, this one. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 4. Now the Spirit, now what, what Spirit are we talking about? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, what days are we in? Latter times. Some shall depart from the faith. We know a well-known evangelist that was head of the Evangelical Alliance that has gone astray and he is talking about gays and lesbians being welcomed into the church without a repenting. I have no problem with gays and lesbians coming into church. I do have a problem when they will not repent of their lifestyle. Okay? And Jesus tells us clearly that man and woman were made for each other, not two men and not two women. It's a lifestyle that people will not turn away from. And if they won't turn away from their lifestyle, they're in sin. And sin will take them to hell. Very hard hitting, maybe this morning, but the church needs to hear it. Now the Spirit, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And who was, Paul, uh, who was Timothy and Paul talking to? He was talking to the church. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience sheared with a hot iron, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Now, I have no problem with somebody who wants to be a vegan. That's entirely up to you. But the Word of God says that they are being commanded, certain people, to abstain from meats. Now, I understand why some people have become vegan because of the way the animals are being treated. I understand that. All right? I'm not against a vegan. But if you tell me that I can't eat certain meats, it's going against the Word of God. You make a choice yourself. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Who wants? Listen to this now. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, let me just make this absolutely clear. I do not agree with how some of the animals are being treated. Okay? I don't agree with that. But I also know that God has told us through the word that we should not tell people to abstain from meats. Now, I, I don't eat pork because I don't particularly enjoy pork. But if people want to eat it, that's entirely up to them. The Jews won't eat it, the Muslims won't eat it. But it's not there in the Word of God, in the New Testament. It is in the Old. Just going to wrap it up. From 1 John chapter, one, uh, chapter 4, 1 John 
chapter 4, and we'll read from verse 1 to 6. And again, this is a warning, church. Beloved, <coughs> believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. How be it, know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. That's so simple, isn't it? And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Now a lot of people say, oh, well, the Antichrist hasn't come. There are many Antichrists in this world today. And a lot of them are in the church. <clears throat> this is the spirit of Antichrist. <clears throat> Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And it's so clear, the church needs, you as an individual need the discerning of spirit. You need to know. When we continue, I'm going to speak about how we can test the spirits. And that's so important. How we can test the spirit. Because the word of God will begin to show us how we can test the spirit that that person is coming in. But we'll leave that because time has gone. And I've got these people coming in at half past twelve. So please just take on board what I said. Do not be worried about anything because greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. The only time Church, now just bear with me for one moment. The only time anything can happen is when you give permission to Satan to do it. Because God is protecting you. But when you take yourself out of his hand and you go elsewhere and do your own thing, you are allowing Satan control. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you've ministered this morning. Lord, help us, each and every one of us, to recognise that we need to have the gift of discernment. That, Lord, when we're listening to people and it doesn't line up with your word, that, Lord, your Holy Spirit, through that gift, will actually show us, Lord, even from your word, what is wrong. So we thank you, we praise you, we just pray you'll protect each and every one with your precious blood. We're coming up very shortly to Halloween. We pray, Lord, for your protection. We pray for your divine wisdom. We pray for your divine knowledge, that, Lord, you will minister, you will encourage and strengthen. And, Lord, just bless each and every one this week, I pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.